This video is your one-stop shop on how to find great locations to metal detect. You are about to learn a lot. Let's go. People leave comments on my videos saying that uh, they can't find great sites to metal detect. This video might help you. You might need a change in worldview and perspective. You might need to walk a little bit more oh, and dang. get out of the comfort zone of the few places that you detect. Most importantly, you might need to understand how things are right now is not how things used to be. On that note, let's start right here. This imagery applies to America, but really you can apply it to anywhere else in the world. We're going population density here. All you got to know is the darker the color, the more dense the population. This data set starts in 1790, and the point of me showing you this data set is if you live in Bumble Valley, North Dakota, please don't cancel me, Bumble Valley, North Dakota residents, and you're hoping to find a colonial coin, well, that's not going to be too easy to do. There's other options for Bumble Valley, North Dakota, and we'll get into that in this video. But for the most part, what I want you to take from this segment of the video is the roots of America are agricultural, and we have been built from the right coast to the left coast, the east coast to the west coast. Now, I just said that the roots of America are agricultural. But if you look back at old maps, and uh, this is New York City. It is a bunch of plots that were farms. When land is settled before anything else gets built, people need food. It is a farm. Here is another version of that. Part of New York, 1742. And these are the individual farms. And now these are all skyscrapers. Daniel! Geography quiz for you. Mm -hmm. What state is Bumble f Valley in? Um, actually, no, that's easy. Um, North Dakota. You, you got it. Yeah. Now, the second important thing that you need to know is in that movement from the East Coast to the West Coast, roads, asphalt is a new technology. The old road was not only a road, it was a way of life, slow and often rough. Unpaved roads, horse and carriage, wagon wheels. If you lived way out in the country, 15 or 20 miles away from the railroad station, you had to get up before dawn to catch the 9.30 train. Horse and carriage, you would go an average speed of 8 miles per hour. In the 1800s, if you wanted to get somewhere fast, you're going to take a train or you're going to go by boat down a river or down a canal. The late 1800s until the start of World War I was the golden age of the railroad. Cars were invented in the late 1800s, but they did not become common until about the 1920s when production methods like the assembly line came out and made them affordable. Many of the largest American cities to date were stations on a railroad or ports on a river. Yeah, let's not forget about those East Coast port cities uh, like New York. Oops. Cities like Chicago and St. Louis, they were born of the railway. All of the major cities in upstate New York, Albany, Syracuse, Rochester, Buffalo, these are Erie Canal cities. And here's your Mississippi River cities. This is a map of roads, canals, and navigable rivers in the year 1850. And all of the dotted lines are canals. And if you combine that with uh, navigable portions of rivers, you could navigate around the entire eastern United States in 1850. So, Merrill, were there roads in America in the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s? Sure, the King's Highway, I'm sure you've heard of, Boston Post Road. There were, but they looked like this. 
You harnessed up the reliable horse, and for the next two hours, the carriage went creaking down the old familiar road. Let me spell this out for you. If you see any construction on a old, original road, turnpike, that was a popular word back in the day. If you see any construction on that, you go in. You ask for permission to go in and metal detect. Because asphalt, that's a new thing. It's a sarcophagus very often over the old stuff, and it's bonanza. Also, the areas around these roads, stagecoach stops. Hotels that use the word inn, not Holiday Inn. Chances are that hotel could come from the stagecoach era. You know, these are great places to metal detect. The countryside moves slowly past. If you were leaving the farm for good to go to the city, you had mixed feelings on that long ride to the station. It's not easy to pull up roots and start a new kind of life. You saw the faces of old friends as you passed their house, waving goodbye, and you felt sad at leaving them. But you saw, too, how old and tired they looked, worn out by hard work, locked on the land. That was just so emo, but it raises an important point. Between 1870 and 1920, 11 million people migrated from farms to urban areas in America. So by now, the people with TikTok brains who feel the need to swipe up have left, and I'm about to tell you what this has to do with metal detecting. To find great stuff, you need to understand the movement of people. I've already shown you historicaerials.com and how to use this amazing and wonderful site. Right here, I have a 2021 aerial photography map over a topographical map from 1903, and I could see where the towns built up. You want to metal detect where the people go. No people, no drops. No drops? So emo. I'm going to link to the video where I have a tutorial on how to use this site. And then there is light detection and ranging, otherwise known as LIDAR. And at our fingertips, we could learn a lot about sites. There's no straight lines that appear in nature, and uh, using LIDAR you could pick out cellar holes, house foundations, you can see where people were. Maps are not the be-all, end-all of metal detecting research. You need to understand the logic of people movement. Most of the first places considered to be roads to in be, North uh, America were built over Native American more. trails. And the wilderness it's looked very much out. like this. This is a New York forest. Sure, there were people that ventured into the woods, into the wilderness, and lived off of the land. No doubt These about that. that. But are... I would stick to farms in terms of the Sticking earliest me. places to find so stuff. That That's where LIDAR ones. comes in. You could see Look where people built home sites off the grid. But for the most part, if you're looking for early civilized spots, it's the first farms, and these farms like were around like the first roads. Yeah, I brought a scissor. Don't judge me. In New York City, you can tell old roads because they meander. There is the grid, like these were added later. These streets were added later. But look at this intersection here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh yeah, that's fun for traffic. Uh, these are parts of old roads, and the grid was built in between. I've studied maps in other cities, and I see similarities. In fact, since the uh, TikTok brains have moved on to X-Finds by now, let's take a look at a 30-second time-lapse of how New York City grew. And we can apply this to other cities, other places. This is important. That commute thing and that travel-to-work thing is a brand new concept. Cities grew from a central point, and people tried to stay close to their jobs. No, try is the wrong term. They had to stay close to their job. That's why you had tenements, the famous tenements in Manhattan. It's not like you could take your Tesla horse in the 1800s to your job and live miles away. The first bridges in New York were all wooden and temporary, and they have all fallen down. 
wasn't until we got the Brooklyn Bridge that you have a bridge that was meant to last and it's still in use today. You had to stay close to your job. The city builds out from a central point. So people had to stay close to their city. But cities were connected to each other by roads. And being that they're dirt roads, well, we know stuff sinks in the dirt and then we, you know, metal detector goes beep, beep, and we find it. I don't know if you've ever seen the channel Great Outdoors Detecting. They hunt the Oregon Trail. And I recall several videos where they got a gold coin on this channel. The Homestead Act was passed in 1862 and it required a $10 fee to make a temporary claim on the land. So when people moved west, there was a very good chance that these bad boys were used because it wasn't like people were going to be able to store them in a bank out there. It was the Wild West. I'm your huckleberry. That's just my game. And this is the point where we give you the advantage over the TikTok heads who are, mm, mm, mm. I'm your Huckleberry, even if you're from Bumble Valley, North Dakota. You are going to learn how to properly read a map. I'm going to link to this in the video description. So check out the video description. But let's go down here. Cemetery, that's easy enough. There's a few important things that I want to show you. First, Ferries, anything with the word point on it, that means that there is a point that there's no bridge. You need to take a ferry. So, for instance, being that New York is really a, a set of islands, I mean, that, that's what we are. There are points all over the place because the bridges came later. So, for instance, right here we have a neighborhood called College Point, and that's in Queens, and over here in the Bronx... We have uh, Clayson Point, and we have Ferry Point. Before these bridges were made, there were ferries that ran here. Now, knowing that, if you can't imagine somebody getting off the boat and dropping their valuables in the water, you need a better imagination. Again, this is linked in the video description, but uh, you have the symbols for bridges. And if you get this on a new map, it means less. But if you see stuff like this on an old map, Ford, that is not just a car. That is a river crossing. If you see that, if you see any of these on an old map, oh, you want to go there. You really want to go there. Again, all of this is on historicaerials.com. That's where most metal detectorists go to do their research first. And yes, I have a video on how to use historicaerials.com. I'm going to link to it up here. Hit the I button. Now I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. You're going to hit that subscribe button. 71% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed. It's free and it helps me and it'll ensure that more videos like this come out. But we're not done, not even close, whether you're in New York City like me, or Europe, or Bumble f Valley, North Dakota. We're going to find places for you to metal detect. But first, let's do a quick review of everything we learned in 90 seconds. America was built from the East Coast to the West Coast. Before any spot became anything else, it was a farm. In the early days of America, people traveled less and had to stay very close to where they worked. Roads were made of dirt, and they were mostly repurposed Native American trails. The average stagecoach speed was 8 miles per hour. If you wanted to get somewhere fast, you were taking a train or you were taking a steamboat. There was a shift from farms to cities in the late 1800s, and cities seemed to grow outward from a central point. Roads would connect cities and towns together. And it would usually take the route which had the easiest geography. Property ownership plays something into that too. Ask Lewis and Clark, the woods of America were very difficult to navigate. If you could use sites like historic aerials, if you could research maps, if you could use LIDAR technology, you can do very well navigating the past. In other words, if you understand the movement of people, if you understand where they were, you'll do very well as a metal detectorist. And in this next section, 
even if you're in Bumble Valley, North Dakota, there are still possibilities for you to enjoy and find great stuff metal detecting. An overview of metal detecting possibilities today. You might not have even heard of some of the stuff we're going to go over today, but I think this is all of the metal detecting possibilities. Let's go. So let's start out with permissions. Permissions is when you walk up to a door or a place and you ask permission, can I metal detect here? Most detectorists don't have the courage to do that. And some of the best stuff is left behind at places that obviously have not been detected yet. If you get a permission, it could mean that you are the first. This is something that is applicable to all 50 states. Obviously, some permissions are better than others. Hunting parks is pretty incredible if you could get past all of the garbage that is in them. I mean, say what you want about parks, but people continue to drop stuff there. There's one in New York called Prospect Park. It's amazing. I I've been there. I've personally pounded it. Every single time that I go there, I see other detectorists there. It still produces. People continue to drop stuff. We're talking about jewelry. We're talking about rings. We're talking about historic coins. There is an art to detecting parks. You have to go slowly, no doubt about it. But there's deeper stuff that's available and masked by iron. You just really have to know how to pull it. I just said masked by iron, but there's also a ton of garbage there. Bottle caps, oh my goodness. You have to be able to work around bottle caps. But again, people continue to drop there. This is something that is also applicable to all 50 states. All 50 states have parks. Be sure to check your local rules. Now, there's different levels of history too, but all 50 states have parks. So I'm going to leave it like that here. You just have to look into what your local rules are. We're going to call this one Ocean Beach Metal Detecting. There's different types of beach metal detecting. Um, that's my favorite. That's what I love to do. And there's different times of the year that are better than others. Obviously, the summertime when people are dropping things is great. And uh, later in the year is good. But there's different levels to the beach. And uh, make sure you watch my beach tutorial. I'm going to go off topic if I start rambling about beach detecting. But... Um, you can get history with it, no doubt about it, but uh, I would say the more common finds uh, would be uh, rings, jewelry. It depends on what you're uh, interested in, but uh, for me, that's what really resonates. Ocean beach metal detecting is not applicable to all 50 states. But you know what type of beach detecting is applicable to all 50 states? Lakes and swimming holes. You may or you may not know this, but when you go in the water, your swimming trunks turn inside out. Anything that you have in your pockets is going to drop to the ground. Also, your hands. You've seen every time you go swimming, your hands get wrinkly. They actually shrink. The rings fall right off. This type of metal detecting is applicable to all 50 states, although I could imagine more swimming happens in the states that have a warmer climate. And the time that you want to go is when there is a drought, when water levels are low. Here's a controversial one, although it really shouldn't be. We pay taxes. We pay taxes. And uh, public schools, they receive taxes. I'm a teacher. And uh, you, you don't want to go during school hours. That's a no-no. That's going to get you banned. That's going to be bad for everybody. But you know what? When it's like late in the day, you know, walk in when everybody else is walking out, um, when the powers that be are, don't be secretive about it. But um, I've found some great stuff at public schools, lots of rings, public schools, lots of history. If someone kicks you out, I suggest you listen to them. I also suggest that you say that you pay taxes for this and that you're going to take very good care of the grounds. Try to stay away from the sports fields. That could get somebody uh, hurt if you're sloppy with the plug. Make sure that you know what you're doing with those plugs. I could speak from my area. Very often the schools are parts of old farms or old estates. And some of my best finds have happened at schools. 
This is applicable to all 50 states, but you also have to remember that depending upon what you're looking for, if you're looking for history, um, you know, old coins and such, you might be better off on the East Coast, but you can find rings anywhere. I have found tons of rings at schools. Come on, admit it. You didn't think of this one. Ski slopes and uh, where people go sledding on hills. Sleigh riding is an old thing. It is not just nowadays, you know, modern drops. If you're talking about a hill that has been in your area for a long time, you could get some good stuff. And think about this. You know, people fall down, uh, change can come out of your pockets, bags can go down, and uh, gloves come off. When gloves come off, that's how I lost my ring. It was a baseball glove. My hands were sweating. My gold ring popped off. I never got that one. Got plenty more, but I never got that one back. Unfortunately, skiing and sleigh riding, sledding, it, it doesn't apply to all of the United States, but in the colder regions, it does. Keep that in mind when the snow melts. Uh, that's what's happening in New York right now. TSA and security. Well, they use metal detectors. I guess they keep us safe, but that's not the fun type of metal detecting, but it is metal detecting. But let's go, same with the, the safety metal detectors for food products, but let's get back to the fun stuff. Oh my God, I love farms. It is one of my favorite places to metal detect. The signals on the farms that I've been have been few and far between. You need to remind yourself to have a efficient swing and uh, you really have to be like on top of your mental game because the signals are few and far between and you could get in bad habits. Your swing could come up and you could miss that great target. And believe me, when you get a great target on a farm, it's gonna be something memorable. One of the things that is sad about uh, metal detecting farms nowadays is gas prices have gone up so much and the economy, at least presently, is so bad that uh, you're no longer seeing tilled farms, no longer seeing the turnover that you once did. Because um, when stuff is turned over, it could get pulled to the top. You could get something uh, that was once deep, that the dirt gets stirred and it gets put at the top. Let's go back to tilled farming. I hope that comes back. We, we love that. The woods is another one of my favorite settings. It is the land of research. LIDAR, historic aerials. If you do your research, if you know where people were in the big soup of the woods, you can do very well for yourself. It could get overgrown. There's actually been times I have brought, you saw me bring scissors earlier in this video, but uh, hedge clippers and uh, you know equipment, uh, power equipment, and um, you know that's been a mixed bag. Sometimes it happened for no reason, and uh, sometimes I've found good stuff. But um, the stuff that you find in the woods, like you could find coins that have been dropped for 200 years that are very shallow in the ground. It's actually pretty amazing how that happens. A quick tip that I'll give you about the woods is you want to find a water source. Some of my best finds have been close to a water source. Underwater recovery. A large percentage of the earth is water. If I remember correctly, it's about 70%. And uh, there's an absurd number of sunken ships that have not been found yet. We just got the news about the ship off of the coast of Colombia, where that fortune was found. And uh, it doesn't have to be off the ocean. Rivers are uh, very overlooked. I mean, think of the Thames River in England and, uh, you know, think of the mudlarking that goes on there and what is found there. It's a place where uh, objects have been deposited, treasures have been deposited for many years. Uh, if it's a, uh, a river that, uh, you know, really uh, has had a lot of people, think of fishing. Think of the need to fish. Um, if you're upstate going fishing, um, you could drop something there. Somebody, you know, hundreds of years ago could have done the same thing. Don't discount it. This is something that applies to all states. Uh, every state in the United States has water. 
curb strips can be great. Now, here's the thing, the modern ones have rebar, the older ones have next to nothing. And you'll know that, you'll know uh, when you're in the presence of rebar. And uh, I would spend more time on the older ones. It's never happened, but if somebody starts yelling at me, I will just move on. If they call the cops, this is a, a reasonable place to be. It's public land, and you just have to reinforce that. You have to say that calmly. As for the smaller grassy areas, everybody goes to the bigger ones because it's more comfortable. Because, let's face it, you're more spread out, people aren't going to bother you. But you know what gets overlooked? The smaller spaces. Those areas, the dividers in between two busy lanes, people used to picnic there. And I had a great day on uh, one of those, it's like six pieces of old silver. So it's all about going to places that were overlooked. So you should consider it. Relic hunting seems to have uh, two meanings in metal detecting. I've seen it used, of course, looking for uh, war artifacts, uh, there's been uh, many wars fought on uh, United States soil, Civil War, French and Indian War, and the American Revolution, of course. You do a lot of research and you find paths that were taken by soldiers' roots uh, in the forest and such. Uh, battlegrounds, campgrounds that uh, soldiers would be. And uh, you find the stuff in the soil that was a relic from war. I've also heard of relic hunting being referred to as uh, finding iron objects. And a lot of people like to find and restore iron objects, uh, axe heads. I've found a few of those and uh, those are really cool to restore. If you're defining it by the war definition, uh, what I'm thinking is you have Mexican American down here. Civil war is uh, all around you know, south, north, and uh, disputed territories. French and Indian is up here. Um, well, American Revolution uh, would be in this region. So I would say you'd be limited to this part of the country. When I say gold prospecting, I'm talking about shooting for gold nuggets. And that is a life goal for me. When I went to France, I practiced with the ORX and the high frequency coil. Um, I'm the uh, XP ambassador, and uh, I was really impressed with uh, how that detector pulled uh, gold nuggets. I just gotta find somebody to invite me to uh, pull some gold nuggets. So anybody wanna hook a friend up, you just reach out. Now, Bumble Valley, I'm talking to you. Map of gold deposits in the United States Oh my goodness, Bumble f Valley is right over here. That's what you're going to do there. That's what you're going to do. Yeah, so this is where the gold veins lie. Oh, New York. I did try, but uh, it's not the same. Another life goal for me is to go meteorite hunting. There are websites on the internet that track where meteorites land and uh, people who sign up for news flashes and as soon as they get that news flash they travel to that part of the world and they go meteorite hunting the oldest objects on earth are meteorites remember that there's older parts of the universe than from where we are situated and uh, we've gotten objects on earth that are older than the earth let that blow your mind. And remember that perspective the next time that you pull a coin that's like 200, 300 years old. So for those of you who are dying to find meteorites just like me, and by the way, the rooftops of New York, some people go up with magnets and uh, pull small ones, but uh, meteorites are most easily recognized and recovered from geologically stable desert regions, either hot like Arizona or cold like Antarctica. So for meteorites, we're talking this region over in here. I bring this next type of metal detecting up because it's really popular on YouTube. I would say 70% of the views of metal detecting videos 
go to this type of metal detecting. And it's not even metal detecting, it is internet posing. Check this nonsense out. Yeah, look at this fool with the Sesame Street plot. Walking around with a terrible swing. Oh, geez, there's dirt that already has been moved around. You put X on the spot. Note that this guy has, uh, let's see, 2.1 million views for this video. <laughs> now you bring in the bulldozers. Why not bring in the shovel? I, I don't know. Bulldozer. Let's see, what does the bulldozer have? Well, according to this, large abandoned cash vault. Oh, it's a safe. Of course, there's tons of those in the ground. Don't believe the hype. Support real information. Support real metal detecting channels. Hitting like, hitting subscribe, sharing. It, it helps a lot. There are special types of metal detectors that go super deep that are meant to find large objects or consolidations of smaller objects like a hoard of coins. Okay, it is time to assemble this bad boy. Well, there is your extreme hunter. This thing goes absurdly deep. It's made for uh, bigger items. Um, yeah, like imagine like a Roman pot that is uh, 10 feet down. You know, you'll have no problem whatsoever with that. And uh, works on the Deus 2 platform. It's an incredible machine. I used it in France. I look forward to using this quite a bit in America. It gives a different angle to metal detecting. And last but certainly not least is Old Copper Culture, which sounds like a retirement club for police officers, but it, what we're really talking about is uh, ancient Native American artifacts that were made of copper. And guess where you find this stuff? Look at this region of America. Oh, and wait, what's this state? Oh, it, it, it's my favorite valley right over in here in North Dakota. We mentioned it several times in this video. What copper culture is in a soundbite is uh, Native American art. There is a rich copper vein in Wisconsin, in Minnesota, in the Dakotas, in Michigan, that uh, enabled uh, the tribes of the area uh, to create uh, their work in copper instead of stone. And uh, just like everything else that we metal detect, uh, so much of this history is still buried in the ground and this is stuff that is thousands of years old. A lot of people say you can't pull metal items that are as old as Roman coins that are in Europe. Actually, you can. It's copper culture. And now you have homework. You're going to see a link in a moment to part one of this video. It is going to teach you something invaluable. Well, one, it's going to teach you how to use historic aerials. And two, it's going to teach you how to understand when you are on old dirt. So much dirt is altered and you have to understand quickly, am I in a good region or a bad region? This video will do that. Please hit like and subscribe. Thank you.